Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make cross stitch shapes and even images in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can create images like this that look as if they are created from cross stitch. We're going to start by creating the cross stitch pattern and then we're going to draw these sort of pixelated objects and fill them with the pattern. We're going to do that with a heart and a circle. I'm going to show you how you can do that with text. And I'm also going to show you a technique for turning a photograph into something that looks as if it has been created using cross stitch. So in this case, let's just go in and have a look at this. You'll see that this looks as if it's a cross stitch set of strawberries. And so we're going to create all of these techniques in a very similar way in Photoshop. To get started, we're first going to create the cross stitch. So I'm going to choose File New. I'm going to create a 20 pixel by 20 pixel image with a transparent background and just click OK. Let's just size it so that we can see what we're doing a little bit more clearly. To create the stitch, I'm going to use the rounded rectangle shape, which is here in the Shapes collection. I'm going to make sure I have a black fill, no stroke, and I'm going to be selecting shape here. In versions of Photoshop earlier than CS6, you got shape by clicking on one of three icons here. In CS6 and later, it's appeared on a menu. So I'm going to start by dragging out my stitch. Now, I want a reasonably fat stitch, so I'm thinking that this is probably a pretty good size. So I'm going to click on the Move tool, hold the Shift key as I rotate this around 45 degrees. And I'm just going to place it into position. And I want it to stretch across this document. So that's a pretty good start to my cross stitch. Now I'm going to view the Layers palette with Window Layers and duplicate this layer by dragging and dropping it on the new layer icon. That just makes a duplicate of that layer. I still have the Move tool selected because I've got this topmost layer selected. I can now just hold the Shift key as I rotate this around to create my cross stitch. Click the check mark to confirm that. Now I've finished creating this shape so I can just merge these together now. I'm just going to right click and choose Merge Visible and that just creates a single bitmap layer. To make sure I have everything selected, I'll choose Select and then All. And now to create that as a pattern, Edit, Define Pattern. And this is a fairly fat sort of stitch, so I'm going to call it Fat Cross Stitch. Because I have quite a few stitches, but this is the one we want to use. I'll click OK. We no longer need this image. We just need to remember that a stitch is 20 pixels high by 20 pixels wide. So let's just close that. Next thing we're going to do is to create a image that we can then fill with cross stitches. So I'm just going to choose File and then New. And I'm going to create a document this time that is 60 by 30 pixels in size. You'll always want to be working with very small documents at this stage. And 60 by 30 will allow me to get a couple of shapes to show you. So I'll just click OK. I'm going to move the shape into position here. Let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to start by creating a circle. So I'm going to do that using the ellipse tool. So I'm just going to click on the elliptical marquee tool and click and drag holding the shift key to drag out a circle. Now you may be able to see it, you certainly will in a minute, that this has very ragged edges and it's supposed to very pixelated edges. Because black is my foreground color, I'm going to press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill the shape with that color. And let's just zoom in a little bit more and you'll see that in fact we've got a very pixelated circle and that's going to be perfect for our cross stitch effect. I'm going to show you how to do a heart too, so I'm going to add a new layer. The reason why I'm going to show you how to do a heart is because it's using a slightly different technique that has a different setting. I'm just going to click here on the shape tool. I want custom shapes and I want the heart shape. Now that's shipped with Photoshop so you'll have that heart shape. Now by default it's going to be set to anti-alias and that's what you don't want and I'm going to show you why. When I drag out this shape you'll see that it's got 
lighter pixels around the edge and Photoshop does that to try and smooth out the shape so it doesn't have hard pixelated edges like this. In fact, we do want pixelated edges for this effect. So I'm just going to choose Edit Undo and I'm going to turn off anti-aliasing and you'll notice too that I'm working with pixels here. We need to be working with filled pixels, not paths or shapes. So just make sure that that's selected, make sure anti-alias is deselected and just drag out your heart. And this time we get those nice pixelated edges, exactly what we want to see. So for us to make this into cross-stitch, so we have a cross-stitch circle and a cross-stitch heart, the first thing that we need to do is to increase the size of this image. And we need to increase it by the size of our stitch. That's the only mathematics in this. So our stitch was 20 by 20. So all we have to do is multiply the width and the height of this image by 20, and then we're done. Okay, so let's choose image and then image size. We want to make this, instead of 60, we have to multiply that by 20. So that's going to be 1200. Zero, zero. And the height of 60 is automatically created for us. But here's part of the problem that we have to address before we leave this dialog. You'll see that Photoshop is applying some anti-aliasing to the edge of this shape to try and smooth it. And we don't want it smooth, we want those pixelated edges. So I'm going to select nearest neighbor hard edges because that option in the resampling is going to keep these hard edges. That's exactly the effect that we want. So I'll click OK. So the image is now resized. It's now 20 times the size that it was. But even though it's a nice big image, you can see that we've still got these pixelated shapes, exactly what we want to happen. So let's start out with our circle. I'm going to add a new layer just above the circle. I'm going to fill it with my pattern. Edit, fill. I need to choose pattern from this drop down list here. And I'm going to open the pattern box here and I'm going to select the last pattern because that's the one that we just created. And the other thing I need to do just here is to make sure that scripted patterns, if it's available here, that it's turned off. You don't want to use that. So I'm just going to click out of there. So this has brought in our cross stitch pattern over the top of our shape. So I'm going to go back to the shape layer and I'm going to control click on the thumbnail. So that selects that circle shape. And I'm going to hide that layer and go back to my cross stitches. And what I want to do is to cut that circle shape out of this cross stitch. But at the moment I've got the circle selected, so what I want to do is invert that selection by choosing Select and then Inverse. And then just press Delete, and that gives me a circle that looks as if it's been sewn using cross stitch. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this layer. Add a new layer and fill it. Edit, Fill. Choose Pattern. Make sure that the last pattern in the box is the one I have selected. Make sure that Scripted Patterns is turned off and click OK. Then we're going to go to the layer that has the shape on it. Control click on the layer thumbnail to select that shape. Turn the color off because we don't need that anymore. Go back to our cross stitch. Choose Select Inverse so that instead of the heart we have everything except the heart selected and press Delete. Now, you'll see that when you look at this really, really carefully, every single piece of this cross stitch is in place. That's because of the way that we designed that, because we multiplied everything by 20. We've actually created an image that we can just dump that cross stitch fill in and then select around our shape and we get whole stitches. We don't have any partial stitches showing here. And that's exactly the effect that we would expect to have. Now let's see too how we would color these. We don't need the heart or the circle any longer, but we can color these. So what I'm going to do with the heart is I'm going to color it pink. So I'm going to select the heart layer, which is just these pixels over here. And I'm going to click here on the lock transparent pixels icon. And I'm going to select pink for my foreground color. And because it's my foreground color, I can fill this layer with pink by pressing Alt Backspace on the PC, Option Delete on the Mac. The Lock Transparent Pixels icon just ensures that that color is only dumped in areas where the pixels are not transparent. 
and in fact that's then coloured the heart just exactly as we wanted it to be. To do the same for this layer, what we're going to do is select it, lock the pixels on it, go and pick a different colour, let's pick a blue, press Alt Backspace, Option Delete, and then we're just going to go back to unlocking those pixels so they're not locked anymore. We can just finish this off by just creating a white layer beneath it, just so that you can see that the effect is as we expect it to be. Now there are a couple of other techniques that it's worthwhile looking at for this cross stitch effect, but if you just came here to know how to create cross stitch patterns that sort of look like this, then you may want to pack your bags and go home. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at two distinct different approaches. I'm going to look at creating cross stitch text, and I'm going to look at creating an image as a piece of cross stitch. So we're going to take a photograph and turn it into a piece of cross stitch. To create cross stitch text, the first thing I'm going to do is choose File and then New. I'm going to create a document that's a pretty good size for my text, but again to get this pixelated result we want it to be on the small size. So this is going to be 100 pixels by 30. We'll just click OK. And let's go and zoom in here and we're going to type our text. So I'm going to click on the text tool. It's easier if I type in black, but it doesn't really matter too much. And I've got a reasonably good font, I think, here selected. So I'm just going to type the word create. And I'm going to click the check mark because I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to drag it into the center here. So you can see that the actual text is even smaller than the document itself. So we can come in here and crop it down a little bit even so. So let's get that nice and small. Again, because we really are looking for this pixelated result. It doesn't matter that it's small, so let's click the check mark. Now, the problem with type is that we do get this anti-alias effect and we will need to stop that from happening. So we need to make all of these pixels, whichever one has any fill in it at all, even if it's very faint, we need to fill it with solid black. And we're going to do this by first making a selection, but we're going to convert this to a raster layer first. So I'm going to right click it and just click to rasterize the type. So this layer now has just filled pixels on it. It's just that not all of them are filled the way we want them to be. So I'm going to click on the magic wand tool because that's actually going to do a really good job for us here. We need to set tolerance to zero because when I click, the only thing I want to select is a 100% transparent pixel. Anything else I want to be filled. So tolerance at zero and I want anti-alias turned off because again, I want to make a pixel selection. I don't want Photoshop to try and smooth this out at all. I have contiguous turned off because there's some content in here and here and here that I want to select. And if I have contiguous turned on, then that area is not going to be selected. So all I need to do now is to just click in a empty area of the image. And you can see that we've selected all the middles of these shapes and every pixel here in the image that is not 100% transparent. Well, they're the pixels that we selected that we actually don't want to select. So let's just invert it. Select inverse. It's just much easier to select the fully transparent pixels and to try and select all these others. Now that they're all selected and black is my foreground color, Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill that text with type. And so now we're ready to go and resize this. So we just need to resize it a multiple of our stitch, which is 20. So let's choose image, image size. We're going to choose nearest neighbor because we do want hard edges. We need to multiply one of these values by 20. So let's just multiply this one. It's going to be 4600. And this, the width is going to be 1340. And so we've got nearest neighbor selected. Nice, crunchy, hard edges. Let's click OK. And I need to add a layer for my stitches. So I'll just click the new layer icon and fill it with my stitches. Edit fill, choose pattern, choose the last pattern in the pattern swatch. Make sure scripted patterns is not selected. Click OK. 
go to our text layer and we want to control click on the layer thumbnail to select just the text outline. We can turn that layer off. We're going to come back to this top layer. We're going to choose select inverse so that we inverse the selection. Now I don't think my selection worked there so let's just make sure that I actually have a selection which this time I do. Let's choose select inverse and then press delete to delete all the pixels that are not colored and so that just leaves in place our cross stitch pattern. As with the other patterns that we created, if we want to change the color, we can do so easily. Let's just go and pick out a color for this, a sort of greeny blue. Let's lock the transparent pixels on this layer. Alt Backspace Option Delete to create them and then unlock those pixels again. We can finish off by just adding a white filled layer to the document just to add some solid white beneath this cross stitch result. To create our cross stitch image we're going to use this image of some strawberries which I downloaded from Morg file. I'm just going to crop it in nice and close to start off with and then what we're going to do is we're going to even out some of the color in the image and we're going to do that using the median filter. Filter, noise, median. And what that does is just flatten out some of the color in the image so that we get bands of similar color rather than a lot of gradation of color. So I'm thinking that probably a radius of something like 21 is going to give me a nice compromise between flattened color but also some detail. So I'll just click OK. We now need to reduce the size of this image. So I'm going to choose image and then image size. And what we have to do is actually pixelate it. So we have to reduce it to a very small size and then size it up again. And I'm thinking that probably if this were cross stitch, maybe something like 60 or 70 stitches high would be really good. So I'm going to set the height to 70, which makes the width about 108. And it doesn't matter how we convert it, so nearest neighbor hard edges is just going to be perfect. So we'll just click OK. And now this is reduced to a very small size, but it's also, as a bonus, it's going to be quite pixelated. You can see the pixels, the colored pixels here, and that's what we need to use to make our cross stitch effect. So the next step, once we've reduce the size of the image is to take it back up again. So each of these individual pixels we want to be a single cross stitch. So since our cross stitch is 20 by 20 in size, we need to increase this by a multiplier of 20. So we're going to go to image, image size, we're going to make sure that nearest neighbor hard edges is turned on and we're going to multiply one of these values by 20 and the 70 is just easiest for me to multiply. So it's going to be 1400. And you can see that we're getting this nice pixelated result, exactly what we want, so I'll click OK. And now we have our pixelated image and we're ready to drop our stitches in on top. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to choose Edit Fill. Make sure we have the cross stitch selected. Make sure scripted patterns is not selected and click OK. Now this time what we need to do is to blend these two layers together. And one of the ways that we can do that is to remove all the pieces on this bottom layer that are in areas that don't have the stitch in them and then just leave the stitches in place. So I'm going to use this particular layer as the sample that I need or the stitch size. So I'm going to control click on this layer and what that does is it selects all the content on the layer which is the stitches. So if I now choose select inverse, what we're doing is we're selecting everything that's not a stitch, in other words the holes in the image. We'll go back down to the background layer remove the lock icon from it and just press delete. And that deletes the colored areas in the image everywhere where the stitches are not. So I'm just going to press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that layer. Now the reason why we're saying no strawberries at all is that we still have our stitch layer on top and all that is left in this image is stuff that is covered by stitches. So let's just turn the stitch layer off. 
And here we have a cross stitch pattern. If we zoom into it, you'll see that we've got lots of little cross stitches and each of these stitches is the color of the pixel underneath. It's just the pixels have been resized to make them really large. So let's just move out a little bit and we're going to finish this off by putting a filled white layer beneath it. White is my background color, so I'll press Control Backspace or Command Delete on the Mac. And I can discard my stitch layer now because all I've done is use the stitches as an indication of where the gaps and where the stitches are. And so we've created this cross stitch effect from a photo in Photoshop. And if we wanted to give it a bit of an extra boost, then all we would do is go and add a hue saturation adjustment layer to the image layer new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and we can just boost the saturation, which is going to make the strawberries just a bit redder. And we're done. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.